Hey, welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw uh, some different head angles and you know head and neck relationship. But what I thought would be kind of fun is just to open up with the sketchbook, um, just mainly because this is how I practice each day before I get rolling. Some of these sketches are going to be pretty bad, but it's not the point. You know, really, it's just to show you how I bounce around a variety of things. Uh, you know, there's going to be some poses that are awkward that never make the cut. Uh, I kind of like the foreshortened arm, but then I wasn't a big fan of the legs there. But again, this is kind of a, a no judgment zone, you know, just practicing, throwing around ideas. Might move to trying to draw some hair, some arms. Those are really bad arms, but that's why I need to practice them. Some uh, other poses. I need to fill up the pages more. Every now and then I do like some collage work. So I got my character Blackstone in there in a couple different shots some text screens, more anime style of Wonder Woman. Yeah, and then I think I did that for a video. Yeah, that was for a video on cross hatching. Some, uh, you know, sexy female poses or my, my attempt at those anyways. Uh, Spawn, you know, he's gonna make it in there uh, here and there, obviously. There's Blackstone again. And this is actually me working through some of the uh, page work of uh, the comic. Sometimes I'll even grab, if a shot comes out really good, say I'll probably use I'm going to use both of these, but I'm definitely going to use this one because it'll be good for like a little panel fill. It's easy enough to capture it. I can even transfer it with the light table. So at any rate, this is, uh, you know, how I practice. Uh, this was actually for a video I just did. Uh, I just want a Craven. I started, but I'm not really digging it. I don't know why. I'm still trying to figure out. I guess it's proportions. Lately, I've been struggling with my proportions again. So guess what? I need to practice proportions. So anyways, this is one I just started not too long ago. I just wanted to share that with you because I think it is important to have these sketchbooks where you really let yourself be free, have your imagination just kind of going, uh, draw and, and you know draw whatever you think you need uh, practice with as well. Okay, so with this one, I really wanted to zero in and focus on the head and neck relationship because... It, it will I'll just show you, but it, it really does a lot for uh, the mood of the uh, the scene, the character. So, you know, obviously if their head's tilted down, you get a more serious kind of vibe, even without the expression. But then the relationship of the, um, the neck, you know, it's very easy. So I'll start with um, something like this, because this would be like, Nine times out of ten, that's going to be the way that I, you know, go. F um, that I'm going to probably implement it, right? So something like that. And then, you know, where's the collarbones? Let's just draw a line across like this, because you kind of need that next orientation point to really see what the way the neck is. So something like that. And so it's just it's downward tilt of the head, and you know, it's pretty. Plain Jane, right? So what if we try to do the same thing and we say, okay, if the head's facing here, tilted down, so we go with the similar kind of setup there. But then, okay, we want something where it's a little more dramatic. Maybe they're looking over a shoulder that way. Now, this also gets tricky too because it's easy to like break the character break their neck basically it sounds bad but it's true like if you bend these characters a certain way it just messes it up and it's unfortunate because then you kind of can't fix that unless you fix the underlying structure so certain things you just got to get right like I said with proportions I need to really zero in on that so if I had them looking down and over it'd probably be silly if I put the shoulder here I would probably have to, well, let's start with the neck. So I'm gonna have them tilting their head back, but obviously there's only so far where it's gonna look natural. If I had the shoulder over here, it'd look ridiculous. Here it'd probably still look almost, I guess it could go right about here. So let's try this. We'll bring the neck down. We know it's gonna connect somewhere into here. We'll say that little jugular fossa. You can usually draw an oval right there. And then let's just bring the Pieces back like this, the other one like this. So we'll just have them tilted away a little bit. And we should probably start 
I, I could probably could have went less and it's better to probably start there and then slowly maneuver towards the more extreme versus the other way around but so we'll say the center line of the chest is there now this makes more sense so now you can almost probably see or you know maybe you can I, I think I can is it okay this is just somebody glancing down that could be whatever they're just glancing down at a book you know a newspaper whatever and this person is like stretching their neck a little bit and looking over and down at something to me this is what I would use if a character was up on a precipice the edge of a building and looking down like they're getting ready to jump in and do battle right um, it's not that you couldn't use this it's just to me this automatically feels a tiny bit more interesting and dramatic just because of that shift of changing the head from the center line of the the upper body okay so let's do um, let's do another one where we bring the head up I go on a bit extreme here, but let's let's go for it. I'll draw a little bit bigger. Hopefully, this isn't too small for it. I should probably tighten it even more. Okay, and I'm just doing quick representations using a little bit of that Andrew Loomis method, but you know, kind of faking it. I'm not doing all the steps. You can probably see that, but I don't want to bore you to death and take too awfully long to get these in place okay so here's our start of a head right not an immaculate head but you can see what it is so they're looking up and then again the more typical way well very typical I could just bring the neck this way and all of a sudden it's not a upshot all that much it's really just a tilted camera uh, so let's not do that let me at least bend the neck back a little bit Okay, so you know, get those uh, sternocleidomastoids down like a V to the jugular fossa where you can use a little oval. Remember, that's just that little spot in between your collarbones or clavicles if you're trying to sound fancy. It's the, oh wait, is that the jugular fossa or the clavic? Oh, clavicular fossa is over here by the shoulder, right? Yeah, let me just stay away from that because eh, it's about when I mess up and then. Somebody has to point it out that I don't remember my terminology. Okay, so something like that. So you can see now that this is a, you know, by itself is kind of an interesting shot. It's just, you know, them looking up and not so far where you'd see the very bottom of the, the uh, jaw. What you might see here if you're trying to get a little bit more uh, semblance or resemblance of what's actually the way it would occur is a lot of times you'll see the bottom of the jaw, or really the neck, you'll see it cut a uh, jet out at an angle a little bit so you can shadow that or whatever but a lot of times for comics you'll see a lot of people just fill that right in and you know unless the head's really tilted back they don't worry about it and those simplifications matter right they make your life a lot easier with complex areas like this uh, it's like I love sitting there and just doing quick uh, sketches of people's comic panels because you see the simplification choices they make you're like, oh my goodness, I was trying to draw all that, and everybody's just kind of uh, <laughs> assume that it's better to just put a shadow there or whatever. You know, it's, it's good to take those notes. So we got something like this where it's slightly tilted up, and you know, the neck's back in a way, but not much. So how could we make that look even more? You know, how could we just position the neck differently so that we're not always drawing this same pose? So let's try. Let's try it again and see if we can make an adjustment. Just again, this is like a, a little bit of an exercise of variation as much as it is just drawing the head and neck because you kind of need both, right? You need those variations to understand what the head and neck is capable of. And if you can't do this stage and you can't even envision it here, follow along, just go to, you know, go to reference, go to your photos. Uh, it's kind of tricky too because you actually need to be a little bit more um, creative with your search your searches through Google or Pinterest or whatever you have to look for action polls I, I really like movies for this particular area of study because you're gonna get these kind of dramatic up shots and camera angles and and certain directors do it more than others so you can look at that and find directors that you like that really explore that um, 
Oh, what's the one I just saw and it caught me off guard? Oh, What Lies Beneath with uh, Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. I had never seen that movie. I don't know how I missed that because I, I love both those actors. And this is back when they were a lot younger. I'm not sure when the movie came out, probably 20 years ago. But I, what caught my eye about it was, you know, it was a nice murder mystery with the, you know, I won't ruin it, but, but, um, it was, uh, the camera angles. I started to notice, uh, I don't know, midway through or as it started to get more intense, I'm like, wow, they're using some really neat camera angles. So that's why I love movies for that because they help you to start thinking about, you know, the framing of a shot and how a dramatic camera angle can really sell it and things like that. And yeah. So anyways, um, how can we do this in a little bit different way? Yeah, I actually got a little bit different head there. Sorry. <laughs> Just can't draw two heads the same way, apparently. Um, but that's really not the goal. We, we can create a bit of variation there. I almost feel like what if we, again, kind of went with this idea. Twisted the head back, the neck back, and I had it with it, I guess. And then we would probably have to tilt the collarbones like this. I think that works. Now I do mean I think because there's times I do stuff like this and then I flip the artwork and I'm like, ooh, that's a broken neck. So again, this is just practice in the sketchbooks, but you do have to be aware of that, that it's for some reason, that's one of the uh, flaws that will pop out at at me and my artwork in this particular area in this given area is just that it looks like a good contortion or tweaking of the body and then I flip it and I'm like whoa I went too far so just be ready for that but to me this now is you know just a little bit more interesting for uh, I mean I, I guess they just sell different ideas you know this one you bring the arm up and they're pointing and they're they're pointing up at Superman this one they are super I feel like this is a little more of a heroic vibe where this would be Superman looking up and over uh, to impending danger or you could bring the arm up and over the head and all of a sudden they're turning and they see danger or you put a big smile on their face and they're turning and they're seeing something that excites them you know so it's not like this just sells the entire shot but again these variations do kind of matter uh, will help you you know convey different stories obviously so Let's see, what else can we do? Let's make sure to, let's do one from behind here. So we'll get the back of the noggin. And so for this one, let's see the side here. Here, back here somewhere, back of the jaw. Little brow line right there. So. With Again, for this one, I'm just gonna go a little bit more standard. Something like that. You know, you can do center lines down the cranium. Okay, so there's one a little more standard. Let's do it again. Let's actually turn it the other way just to practice more variation. Plus we already know from the previous ones that I can't seem to draw the same head twice. Another thing I need to fill up some sketch pages with, right? That's the beauty of sketchbooks as well is that as soon as you realize there's something you're not doing well, you take it to the sketchbooks and just go nuts with it. All right, so let's see here. Oh, you know what? I have actually started to establish the neck. Let me get that out of there because I actually want to make sure that it's varied more than that anyways. So you got that divide of the uh, side of the head here. See, and I didn't really drop in that angle. I put the brow a little higher, but there's that where you get that angle. You could actually do that crisscross on the back of the head. That's probably not a bad idea just to really know where the center point and this helps you really show that orientation of where you're at. So center lines, guidelines. Again, I keep wanting to draw that neck, but that's not where I want it. So let me finish the jaw. Let's 
Okay, so the jaw is here, on about, and so we've got this straight and parallel to, you know, just that straight up and down. So I don't feel like there's a lot we could do here except just add that, that tilt like this. But it should make it feel a lot more dramatic and interesting. Obviously this part would kick out now. You'd probably get some good wrinkles back here. And the other thing is, is as you work down, forgive me if I'm a little bit off camera here, uh, as you work down, you can, you know, one arm down, one arm up, and that adds to the drama of the pose, obviously. Let's say something like this, and then you would also focus on how the muscles push and pull against these, uh, these types of poses. Goodness, my hard drive just flared up. Flared up. That is not the right term. It uh, it's revving up though. Like my computer is about to grow wings. Take off on me. It's like a little turbine in there. Yeah. So even just that little shift like that, I think helps. I think it feels a little bit broken there, but. Now it's making me want to figure out the trapezius because I feel like it totally didn't nail that. I get that little diamond back here somewhere. Okay, I don't want to veer off too much because again, this is supposed to be just the head and neck. And and I really do think that when you can zero in and focus on these specific areas of study, it, it can be so uh, beneficial for you. You know, it's it's something I, I like to do. I don't do it enough. I, I need to do it more. Uh, so what's another one we could do? We've got a little bit of variety there, but what could we explore that's not in here? I'll tell you one that, that always bothers me, and I try it over and over. I, I didn't like it as much in the, the uh, Captain America one I just finished. Um, again, that's one of the ones that just made me feel like I need to work on proportions more. But well, I'll tell you one that's really tough for me, and it's, it's not it, it's not so much head and neck because you don't see the neck as much, but it, it still is. So and it's really popular. So I'll, I'll try it. So I practice it all the time, but I still feel like I always struggle with it. So for this one, I'm gonna bring the shoulders up like this, head about here, downward tilt to the head. It's just that you know kind of tough guy thing, tough guy, tough tough gal. Tough lady. That doesn't sound right, does it? I guess that doesn't sound bad. I don't know. Who knows? I've never watched UFC and watched a couple of those girls fight, and so that's a tough lady. Which those ladies are tough, and I would not mess with them, I'll tell you that. Okay, so. Shoulders. So yeah, so the tricky part here for me is like, when do I show the neck? So first I generally try to establish the uh, collarbones and then I try to squeeze in parts of the neck. But from a view like this, I feel like, yeah, see, I feel like I messed that one up as well. Like it is just a really tricky one. And I love these types of poses but they're very easy to get wrong. The head placement, if you bring it too low, then it's like you're you're tilting the head too far back. So let's do this, and maybe this will expose it. I'm gonna try to draw this from the side. Again, this isn't my strong suit, but I, that's why I need to practice it. So if I was to bring, you know, you see the trapezius is up here at the top of the head. Usually it'll cut through more of the ears, and if, if you picture the ears we're somewhere around here, then that means the head's really low, right? I don't know if they could tilt their head up that far. I'd have to drop the eyebrow down more and we'd be looking at the top of the head, in which case I still think it would be back further. But let's see. So I'm gonna bring the trapezius way up like this. I'm actually gonna start here. I feel like I need to. And then I'm gonna bring the head out like this. I'm going to try to perceive the angle in which it would be tilted down. 
I'm also having to look over and make sure I'm on camera here. So let's say something like this. That looks weird right now, but I hope I can fix it. Let's see, it'd be like a, you know, venom pose, like in big shoulders. And so then the neck would come out like this, maybe. Maybe it has no neck, it's just one of those no neck type characters. No, you gotta have a neck in there. Shoulders. So yeah, see, I'm having a hard time even making that work like this. And I would think that the arms would be forward, but I'm not gonna get too much into that. Like the so I'm really just trying to figure out could they lift their head up that much where, where it wouldn't look broken you know and I guess I guess Venom isn't a good example because when it's a monstrous character like that you can take it further you can break you can bend and break some of the rules it's the humanoid characters that you have to worry about like you'll see people myself included you know skew Venom all the time because it's you can get away with it, just like Carnage or something like that. You know, any of those monster-like characters. You can vary up the proportions more greatly. You can bend and twist a, an arm or a limb oddly. And it, you know, within reason. But it, it generally is more uh, accepted because, uh, you know, what they are. They're a monster. They're an alien. They do whatever you want. And I think that's why people like me tend to enjoy drawing those characters because then I, I don't have to worry about my proportions as much play around with it yeah this trapezius is funny I probably should have started with the shoulder and the collarbone on this one and then attached all this I feel like that's what's throwing me for a loop Say something like that. So I don't know. Could yeah, I said I think that I think that could work. Tell you what, you know what a good reference point for something like this would be? Uh linemen. You know how they do the pose and they lift their heads up to, you know, be focused on what they gotta do on the line. This would actually probably be uh, a great opportunity to use that pose. I mean you know, sports in general, athletes in general are, are the best reference for a lot of things because these are, you're trying to create these dynamic, interesting, powerful characters. And I mean, the, the ones that are closest in real life, football players, gymnasts, even basketball players. I mean, I guess that's kind of a, some of them, you know, some have the, that kind of build. And then um, UFC fighters is great, obviously. Mention that all the time. All right, so yeah, I feel like that one could work. I, I feel like there could be even more tilt. So here it might just be placement. I feel like the chin. So in the way that I've drawn it here, the chin does line up with that, you know, jugular fossa area that in between the clavicles. And here it is just above it. So this might not be as bad as I thought. But again, it's good to do variations and then move the placement around and see what you get. See if that's what you're looking for. I still feel like it looks a little bit odd. You guys can let me know what you think as well, obviously. And let's see. So let's see what we got here. We've got a few different tilts, angles. What else? What would be another good one? we got one from the back. We've got... Hmm, let's try, I got, I got an empty spot here. Let me try another one. So let's try, we've got tilted up, tilted down. Let's tilt it off to the side more. Okay, so we get that cross section in really early so that we got an orientation to work off of. Like this. So off to the side, center line of the face is pretty far over. And then let's bring the neck. Uh, let's see. Where we got twisted back. 
I don't know, I kind of like putting that, uh, that curvature like that. I guess it just looks more interesting to kind of hyperextend parts of the body like that. You know, it just feels more like something you'd see in a comic book. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, and then... On the last wall, this video is getting pretty long. I, I would honestly just keep doing this. I like to fill up all these spots. I would just throw another one in here and I just keep moving the, the thing around. You know, it's, to me, this becomes uh, a bit of a model that I just try to move around and uh, envision in as many different ways as I can. And I feel like even this simple kind of exercise is a great warm up. It really is because it just, I don't know, it just gets the gears going a little bit. Something as simple as this. So let's take this one and go, okay, what if the neck was, it's really the orientation of the body in conjunction with this. I would just do the collarbones off to the side. I mean, one, one thing to always keep in mind is I'm trying to like hold the sketch pad uh, and draw at the same time. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that, and I've said this plenty of times, so this will sound redundant, but it's it's just tilting the, the chest away from the orientation of the head and then, all, and then also paying attention to that with the pelvis, the lower pelvis, is so important to making your, your poses look more interesting rather quickly. Uh, it's the most bang for the buck, and it's, it's super easy to zero in on and, and practice, but you have to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and time lapse the next part. And all I'm going to do is just clean these up real quick for you. Uh, and that's it. So good luck with your practice and let's uh, time lapse this.